Are you in there? Hello? Hello? G'day and welcome to my channel. I got another box. This time it's from Viva. Vivo? However you want to pronounce it. It's a, as far as I know, a Chinese company. I don't know much about it. I know they sell a whole heap of tools. They've only been around a couple of years. Uh, that I've seen their advertising anyway. Tools and, and brewing equipment and distillation equipment. And here we have a still. So of course I'm gonna use it to make hand sanitizer. But seriously, I will be using it to make a lot of alcohol sanitizer for the brewery because I use it a lot in the brewery. And I'm sort of, because it costs a fair bit to buy, I don't use as much as I probably should at times. So if I can make my own and have a plentiful supply, I'll be very happy. Of course, you can drink some of it if you like. I didn't pay for this unit. I did apply for their affiliate program and was accepted and they sent me this to review. But as always, these reviews are my words and my thoughts. So what I am interested in as well, apparently you can ferment in here. There's a stainless fermenter that holds about 30 liters, which is about eight gallons. Let's have a look. One thing I'll mention, when you order from these companies sometimes, you think it's gonna be on the slow boat from China. Now, this turned up in a couple of days, so the postage is really good. So that's it there. Let's see what's inside. Now the first thing I'll say immediately is it is a mirrored finish. Sometimes you get some of these stainless products and they're not quite polished right, but this looks perfect. It's very quite sturdy. There's a silicon seal around the edge inside. A couple of these flexible transfer tubes, which we've seen before. I used to use these uh, with my Brazilla. If you are interested in these, before you rush off and buy anything, I have got a 5% discount code. It'll be below in the description. This is a pump, recirculation pump for your cooling water. I have a bag of bits and pieces. I can, there's an airlock in here some silicon hose, a small dial thermometer with Celsius and Fahrenheit on it, and some copper fittings and seals and nuts and things. We'll have a look at those later. And some instructions by the looks, which is always handy. Here is a, a small pot with the cooling coil inside. On the side here, there's inlets, outlets, for the water. So you use that pump and you pump in your cooling water. You can use a reservoir so you don't use so much water. And here is another pot. This is, would be your thumper. I'm using a lot of terms that uh, maybe homebrew beer brewers don't use, but we'll get into those later. Everything even inside the lids is nicely polished. I thought that was marked then, but it was a bit of leftover polish. So everything's been really nicely polished. Everything looks surprisingly well built. I'll show you inside this pot. And of course this needs a clean. But it's quite nice. So the idea is firstly, you can ferment your wash, uh, which is like what you call wort, but when you're making a wash for distilling, now the lid has the hole here, the smaller, it looks like about 10 mil hole for the thermometer, and the other hole where we'll put a grommet on and be able to use the airlock. And for those in the beer world, when you're fermenting a wash, it's not quite as critical as when you're fermenting beer 
You can be a little bit more lax with temperatures, a bit warm. You're not worried about that because it's all going to, all you want is the alcohol in there. And then you're going to, of course, use a still and uh, distill the alcohol out of it. Though, looking at this pot, as long as you sanitized it correctly, it'd be fine to ferment a beer in. It hasn't got a tap or a faucet or whatever you want to call them, a valve, you know, on the side to empty that out from the bottom. But you could always use a, a siphon or something if that's what you wanted to. And so that's what you'd probably do with this. So if you do use this to ferment in, uh, personally, I'd be transferring it off the yeast anyway. You don't want to be trying to distill it with your whole yeast cake at the bottom. So you'd wait for it to clear or move it to a clearing vessel even. Uh, again, you're not worried about the oxidation that you are with beer. So you can ferment it initially in here and then transfer it off to a cube to clear or something like that or another container or one of your old fermenters. And then you clean this up and then once it had cleared or whatever, you can move it back into this uh, to distill it. These come in a huge array of sizes from you know 20, even under 20 liters. This is 30, they go 50, 70, and they probably go even bigger. I've just screwed the thermometer in the lid. There's your thermometer and your airlock. There's several ways you can use it once you're using it for distilling. Of course, you're gonna need a heat source. So this is, I could probably do this on my stove. You don't have to get it to boiling, of course. You're only getting it to, we'll say 80 degrees for, for now. Of course, you will need a barbecue stove or a stove or something to heat it because it doesn't come with an element. But this will work fine on my household stove. Uh, even if it was full, you're not looking to boil it. Of course, you, it's just below boiling temps and most stoves, my little household stove here would do it no problems at all. You could use it just with the chilling coil in there, the condenser, and it can be set up with the thumper. I might just set it up roughly here and give you a look. I won't be operating it today. I've got to go and ferment the wash. So when you're going to use it as a still, you'd get rid, of course, of the airlock and you'd have to attach this, which is just a nut and a washer. So if you were distilling water or using it as a still, the vapors would come up this pipe here and be fed through this chiller. Before I put it all together now, I think what I'm gonna do is of course apply some thread tape to some of these joints. So there's no point in me screwing it all together now without the thread tape. So we'll come back after I've done that and we'll have a bit of a closer look. Without operating it yet, for $162 I think it was, you get a lot of stuff for $162. That doesn't usually go far these days, especially that's all this is stainless. That's not bad at all. That's before the discount too. That's before the 5% discount. Without reading the instructions earlier, I put the seal on the lid. It's supposed to go on the pot. It probably looks like a mess from there, and it probably is. <laughs> Until I get it set up properly and try to use it, I'll find out what sort of configuration I want to have it in. And the condenser here, you would have these water pipes on. One of them would be connected to the pump. That would sit in a cold water reservoir and be pumped around, like a counterflow chiller, around the copper coil to cool it down. Distilled water, alcohol, sanitizer. I am excited to see how this goes. So thanks for taking a look. I'll leave all the links below, uh, hopefully with the 5% discount code. 162 bucks for this. Look, I haven't used it yet, let's be honest, but there's no reason why it shouldn't work, but we'll see how it goes. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Please like the video. It doesn't cost anything. It really helps the channel out. And thanks to my patrons, because without them, I couldn't continue to do these videos. They're very important. Become a patron. You can do so for just a couple of bucks a month. You get extra videos. You will have the extended video of this uh, a week or two before this video comes out. Take it easy, thanks to Viva, thanks for watching. Here I am using an induction plate, doing a bit of a cleaning run. It's working fine.